The Chromecast with Google TV is Google's latest and improved release in their popular Chromecast lineup. This version of the Chromecast has come on leaps and bounds in terms of functionality with the ability to stream 4K at 60 frames per second to TVs that support it, and it also grants access to thousands of apps that work with Google TV. It's available in three different colors, white, blue, and pink, and is currently priced at $49 in the US and £55 in the UK. In this review, we'll take a look at what the Chromecast with Google TV does well and what, if anything, it doesn't do well. The Chromecast with Google TV package comes with the HDMI dongle that connects to the TV, a USB cable that connects to the power brick and a remote control. And I was pleasantly surprised to find that the batteries are included. Setup is quite straightforward and during this process, the remote control learns the TV remote controls functions so you can use the Chromecast remote control for volume and power. Talking of the remote, I would describe the remote as compact and I'd add that it has the perfect combination of form and functionality. The volume buttons are actually on the side, which to be honest took a little getting used to, but I quickly adjusted. The volume buttons felt comfortable with the remote control in both the right and left hand, using my thumb or index finger to change the volume. It's a little bit like using a mobile phone. With regards to the other buttons on the remote, there's a directional pad with a select button in the center, a back button, a very useful search button which I'll come back to, a home button which quickly brings you back to the main screen from any app or video, the mute button and dedicated YouTube and Netflix buttons. The YouTube button can be changed to open up YouTube music, but there isn't currently an option to change the Netflix button. On the bottom row is the power button which will power off the TV and the source button so you can easily cycle through the TV's HDMI sources. The search button activates Google Assistant and this is very easy to use and speedy. You can quickly find YouTube videos, check the weather, open apps, find programs and more. I found it handy if I want to play a song. Voice search finds it on YouTube and plays it automatically. Being able to voice search definitely makes life easier and is a great replacement for the cumbersome keyboard which is still available as it is sometimes still needed. Physically the remote is made from a very smooth plastic which does make it slippery in hand. The buttons have an ever so slightly rubbery feel and are easy to press and are super responsive when moving between apps and services. The Chromecast with Google TV home screen has menus at the top that you can move between and you can see different recommendations from various sources. If the screen looks a bit busy for you, you can change it to app view only, which will show you just the apps you have installed. It's a nice option to have. In the standard home screen, there is a menu section for apps. Here you can scroll down and see the apps you have installed, as well as apps which are available from different categories, such as recommended, games and entertainment. All of the major streaming services can be installed, including Amazon Prime, Disney, Netflix, Spotify and more. And apps such as VPNs can be installed to give you access to other geographic areas. To see the full range of apps and games available, you can do a voice search for Play Store and at the top you have an option for apps and games. The game section offers games from different genres that can be played with the Chromecast remote and others which you need a controller for. If you're a casual gamer or you want to give the younger ones something to keep them occupied, then the Chromecast is a great choice. Some of the many free games you can play are Pac-Man, Crossy Road and Asphalt 8 Car Racing. Google's own game streaming service Stadia isn't officially available at the time of recording. However, it has been suggested that it will be available sometime in 2021. With that said, it is possible to install it via the side loading technique, however, it takes a little tinkering. A few of the games from the store are very large downloads. Asphalt 8 is by far the largest that I've installed at 2.39 gigs. With the total internal storage of the Chromecast being 8 gig and around 4 gig of that being taken up with system files, storage could become an issue. You can either remove some unwanted apps and games to make more room available, or you can attach a dongle and connect a USB flash drive or hard drive to expand the storage. To do this, you will need a USB Type-C dongle that can receive power, PD, as it will need to pass power to the Chromecast. Using the Chromecast's power brick will not deliver enough power, so a more powerful power supply is needed. Once connected, you can format the flash drive and it can be used as additional storage. Using a dongle also gives you the option to use a webcam with Google Duo for web calls, connect a wired or wireless keyboard and mouse, and much more. Back at the home screen on the menu bar, we have the tabs labelled for you, movies and shows. Each of these groups movies and shows by category for you to peruse. It gathers these titles from streaming services you have installed, as well as Google TV, and creates its suggestions based on what you view. 
Beneath each title, there is information telling you which streaming service is providing the show, if there is a price associated, and the Rotten Tomato score to give you further insight into how the show has been received. You can click onto any show and it will reveal options for purchasing or renting the show, details about the cast and crew, and other similar shows. You can also click into the Rotten Tomato score to see what people have said. As well as this, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and many shows will tell you if it's available in SD, HD or 4K. And you can adjust which streaming services suggestions are taken from by going to the bottom of the For You menu, selecting Manage Service and toggling off the services you don't want suggestions from. The final tab on the menu is the Library tab and this tab allows you to manage your purchases and rentals and save shows onto your watch list. Maybe as important as anything mentioned so far is the playback quality when watching a movie or show. The 4K playback quality has consistently been reliable and of a high quality. I've tried this while playing back Netflix at 4K and YouTube at 4K and I haven't experienced any freezing or jitter whatsoever. And when playing back movies in 1080p, the quality has been top notch. It's been a real pleasure to watch. And a Chromecast wouldn't be a Chromecast if you didn't have the ability to cast from your personal devices right to your TV screen. And the Chromecast with Google TV makes it a cinch to share content from your laptop, phone or other mobile device. And you can also connect your AirPods or other Bluetooth headphones if you need to watch a show without disturbing others. Also, if you need to get onto the internet, the Puffin browser is a good choice as surprisingly the Chrome browser isn't currently available for download. It can however be installed with a bit more tinkering but the Puffin browser will fulfill most people's needs. In terms of issues that I've experienced over the past two months, there have been surprisingly few. The YouTube app froze on me once. I simply pressed the home button and went back into it and it was fine. I've had absolutely no other technical issues. The remote control is a little bit on the slippery side, as I mentioned, and it's worth installing the Android TV remote from the app store onto your phone as a backup in case the Chromecast remote slips off somewhere. Some may see the 8 gig total storage as a limitation and certainly having to purchase additional hardware to expand the storage does add up. Overall, I've been very impressed with the Chromecast with Google TV, so much so that the remote for my LG TV, which has WebOS and gives me access to the same services such as YouTube and Netflix, has been relegated to the sidelines. When I turn the TV on, I go straight to the Chromecast and I use the apps from there because it is so much faster. The Chromecast is simple to use, intuitive and has great voice search capabilities. And if you use Google products such as Nest, the Chromecast offers integration to that too. There isn't much that the Chromecast doesn't do, and everything it does, it does well.